Hi players, bonjour from Paris, my name is Asaf Hirsch and welcome to my channel Easy Board Games. Today I'm going to show you how to play Revive, which is a 1-4 to four player game of resource management, exploration, deck, engine and tableau building and all of this to see what happened after 5,000 years of living beneath the surface of the earth and humanity is rising up again to see what's going on. As always, if you saw something that you like, if you learned something new, don't forget to leave me a comment, to like and subscribe to my channel. I will appreciate it a lot. Without further ado, let's get to it. All right, so after we've put the board at the center of the table, we're going to take these five starting tiles, they're marked with the letter S behind them, and we're going to put them face up in these places, in the center where it is marked with the letter S as well. Next, we will shuffle the remaining 25 area tiles and we're going to place them face down on the board. So, one, two, nah, I'm just joking. The next thing we need to do is to take these five large location tiles, shuffle them and randomly place them at the four corners on either one of the sides. Again, this is going to be random. Next, we'll shuffle all the citizen cards. We're going to place them right next to the board. And from them, we're going to draw five cards. We'll put them face up. Then we'll take the machine tokens and we're going to sort them to three colors. We have gray, green, and yellow. Each uh, color we will need to shuffle and then create a pile face down and put it right next to the board. From each pile, we will draw three tokens and put them face up. After that, we're going to shuffle the slot module tokens and we'll place them face down next to the board. From this, we're going to take five tokens face up and place it right next to it. So far, everything that we've put face up will be considered by the rulebook as the display. Right after that, we can take all the crate tokens, we can give them a good shuffle, put them face down, and again, they go right next to the board as a supply. We'll put all the energy markers, again, as a supply right next to the board. We have the two action cubes, they will help us a little bit later. Then we'll take the minor artifact tokens, we're going to put them right over here, and on top of them, we're going to put the end of game tile, which is this one with the number four on it. Last but not least, we're going to take the major artifacts. We have again, three colors, uh, white, yellow, and pink, purple, something like that. And we're going to put them over here at these locations. It doesn't really matter where you're going to put them exactly. We need to pay attention that we're using only the tokens with the corresponding number of players. So in our example, I'm going to set up the board for two players. We're only going to use the tokens that have the number one and two on them. First of all, each player will take one of these player boards and will choose a random tri board. When you put it over here like this, don't forget to make sure that the sun side is up. On the other side, we'll have the moon side, but it will be unlocked only after you've played the campaign. Then you will take the three machine track markers. They have three colors. They have gray, yellow, and green. And you're going to put them on their track on the first place. So yellow, gray, and green. You'll take one energy token and put it right here at the center. You'll take the switch token and put it right over here to cover the red light. And then we'll need to take a random set of six starting cards. So what does it mean? As you can see here, we have uh, some cards, citizen cards that have the letter S behind them to again mark starting. And if you can see right over here, there is a letter uh, over here, it's B. Now there are three other sets, A, C, and D. I've randomly chosen B. We're going to shuffle it, take three cards to go over here to our active area. And the other three we're going to put right over here in our resting area. 
Then we'll take all the artifact cards. We'll give them, again, a good shuffle. And we're going to give one card to each player. Just as a reminder, of course, those cards need to be hidden from the other players. Each player will also receive a player aid. And to be honest, this player aid uh, helps a lot, especially if you're working with uh, uh, action cubes. Then we'll take the building meeples. We have three big ones and five small ones. We're going to put the big ones over here and the small ones right over here. Then we'll take the seven population figures and we're going to put them right over here on the population icon that we have again on our uh, tribe board. Then we'll take our two pawns. We'll put one of them on the point marker, on the zero, of course, and the other one on the lowest part of the hibernation marker. But I'm going to show it to you right in a few more minutes. Then we can take our four resource markers and put them on the bottom of our resource track. Last but not least, we'll take our 20 progress markers and we're going to divide them between two locations. The first location will be the five positions over here on our tri-board and the other one will be over here on our machine to cover all the uh, reward spaces. And that's it, we're good to go. All right, guys, so before we're getting started, I still owe you something from the setup. And these are the two big meeples over here. One of them is going to come right over here to the point tracker on the zero. And the other one is going to go right over there to the hibernation track. And since we're doing a two player setup, I'm going to put another one right next to it. Now, as you can see in uh, the frame right now, you have the main board and you have the yellow player uh, tableau, the, the player area. The other things I put off screen, so all the display, the tokens, uh, like the crate or the machine tokens, uh, the lightning, I put aside and every time I will need to show you something to demonstrate, I will show you this photo right over here. Another thing that I would like to add is about the resources that we have. So first of all, we have four resources, as you can see over here. The first one is the crystals. Uh, that is basically like a joker resource. So it can replace any other resource. Right next to it on the right, we have the gear. After that, we have the book. And the last thing that we have is food, which is like a sack of uh, wheat, I would like to say, or something like that. But you get the picture. Another thing that I would like to add is the difference between the blue sign of the points and the purple one that we can see here on our personal tableau. So the difference is that every time that we're going to receive uh, this kind of um, victory points, we're going to add them immediately to the point tracker. The other kind of points, the purple one, we're going to take care about it at the end of the game. As you can see here on the player aid, we have uh, two sides. We have the left side that show us the normal actions that we can do. And on the right side, we have the hibernation action, but we'll talk about it a little bit later. So in every single turn, we can do uh, up to two actions from the left side. Let's talk about it. The first action that we have is playing a card. The second one right next to it is to uh, activate the switch and receive a resource, but maybe I'm a little bit ahead of myself. The third thing is to scout. Next to it, we have build, and last but not least, we have to populate. So again, every single turn, we can do up to two of these actions. Uh, it can be the same action twice, so we can play two cards or build two buildings and so on. I think you got the picture. So over here at our tableau, if you can pay attention, we have this switch that can go from uh, green to red. So of course we're starting with the switch on the red light, but once we move it to the green light, we can receive any resource that we would like. So let's say for example, that the first thing that I would like to do as the yellow player is to activate the switch. Then let's say that I would like to receive uh, a gear. The only thing that I need to do is to take the gear the resource marker and push it one step forward. Let's move on to the second option that we have to do on our turn and that is to playing a card. 
As you can see over here, we have the active area. These are the cards that we can actually play. It's true that at the beginning of the game, we have only three cards, but since this is a deck building game, uh, as we move forward in the game, we can acquire more cards from the display for we can recruit more citizens as the, it's called in the game and have more cards in our active area. On the other side of the tableau, we have the resting area, which is basically our discard pile, okay? Just to make things a bit more simplified. So the first thing that I would like to do when I'm playing a card is to decide which part of the card I would like to play. Do I want to play the upper part or the bottom part? Here, for example, we see that on the upper part of the card, we can receive two food, while on the bottom part of the card, we can receive one uh, slot module. Let's talk about it in one second. So when I want to play the uh, upper part of the card, I just need to slide it over here into my machine just like this. So I'm basically covering the bottom part of the card, uh, letting the other players know that I decided to play the upper part. And right now, after I played it, I'm going to take whatever that gave me. So in this case, again, it will be to food. We're going to advance our um, resource tracker of food two steps forward, just like that. So now let's say that I have actually decided to play the bottom part of the card, okay? Uh, first of all, let's take back the food track. In this case, if I want to play the bottom part of the card, I will need to slide it at the bottom part of the machine and take the bonus, which is uh, the slot module. On this slot module, we have the icon of the food. When we take it, we need to choose where we would like to put it on our machine. So we have two options. First of all, obviously we can put this uh, slot module only where we have uh, an option, okay? So if it's not all occupied. At any part of the game, even if it's all full, you can get rid of one of the slot modules and replace it with another one. So the first option that we have is to put it right here when we see this uh, green V that is marked on the machine. And when we put it, the slot module right on it, we actually get, uh, we actually get to gain this uh, uh, bonus immediately. So if I decided to play it like this, uh, what I would like to do is to push our food uh, marker one step forward. Now, here's the interesting thing. As you can see, we have two colors here, green and yellow. The next time that I will play a card to this part of the machine right here, which means that I actually played the upper part of a card, if the card is in the colors of green or yellow, then on top of the bonus that I will receive from the card, I will actually activate this slot module. So I'm going to gain this bonus as well. Let's say that the second action that I decided to do on my turn, since I can do uh, the same action twice, is to play another card to the machine, okay? So I'm going to put this card right over here. So obviously I played the upper part of it. The card itself is giving me one food and one book. But since this is a yellow card and over here the slot module is also, also has the yellow, um, the color of yellow, I will get to gain another food. So in total, we will gain two food and one book. And of course, I will push forward the uh, counters of the resources. Okay, so after we understood this, let's talk about another thing that we have here. First of all, as you can see over here, we have a, a place for a card that goes actually sideways. We cannot use this uh, yet, only after we're going to uh, activate the proper part on our tribe board. So only after we're actually going to uh, populate with this meeple, okay, which is going to take a little bit more time, but we'll talk about it in a few minutes, I'm not able to use that part. Another thing is that I cannot play a card upside down, not in, it, not in its normal position. What does it mean? Let's say, for example, that we have here uh, two cards that are occupying our machine uh, to play another card to the bottom side. And I would really like to gain this bonus of this card, but this is at the bottom part of it, okay? 
So we don't have here any more uh, places open. I am not able to play the card like this upside down on my machine. This is not possible. Another thing that I would like to add about cards, it's something that's called a slot symbol. So let's take a look on this card right over here. As you can see, we have this uh, thing that's called a slot symbol. And this gives me the option to play a card on top of it. So let's take, for example, uh, uh, this case that I'm putting this card right over here. So I'm getting to have the book. And of course, as you remember, I have this slot module, which means that since the card is green and the slot module is green, I get to activate it also. So I'm getting one book from the card and one food from this token. And also since I have this thing right over here, later I will be able to place another card on top of it. Otherwise, if I don't have this thing, I can play only one card. I cannot add to it another card. So before we continue to talk about the three actions over here, which are explore, build and populate, I would like to talk to you about a basic concept here in this game that is called range. So range is the distance that we have between either the chasm at the beginning of the game or from our one of our buildings or a population nipples that we have already on the board to the destination of another building, another population, or a exploration. I know it's a little bit confusing. Let me show you how easy it is. In the beginning of the game, when we don't have anything uh, uh, still on the board, we will need to count our range from the chasm, okay, from the center of the board. So let's say that I want to explore, okay? I want to explore this tile right over here. First of all, I will need to pay the cost, which is five food, but on top of it, I will need to pay the cost of the range. Now, the range is actually from here. It's going to be one, okay? So the distance between the chasm and the tile, it's going to be one. So on top of the five food, I will need to pay one more food. For the other example, just to make sure that we understood it correctly, if I want to explore this tile, on top of the cost of the exploring the tile, which is two food and two books, I will need to pay the cost of a two food since this is the range between the chasm and this tile. So the range between them is going to be two. And for each range that I have, I need to pay one food. So it's not so bad because we explained the range and also we started to talk about the exploration. So now we already understood what is the uh, cost to explore a tile. So let's talk about uh, the other things that we have in exploration. After I've chosen the tile that I want to explore and I've paid the cost on the back of the tile and the range from where wherever it was, uh, I receive a bonus. So in all of the tiles, uh, without an exception, I'm going to receive a bonus of recruiting another citizen, okay? We're going to draft another citizen from the display. On top of that, we're going to receive some victory points that we're going to uh, gain immediately since this is uh, in the color of blue. Let's talk about what happens uh, when we progress in our victory uh, point marker. Uh, so let's say again that we discovered, we explored this tile over here and we gained five victory points. We're going to advance over here and you can see that there are some bonuses along the way. So every time we have a bonus along the way, you uh, guessed it correctly, we're going to receive this bonus immediately. In this case, we're going to take one of these uh, bonus crates. So again, for example, this tile which cost uh, five food, again, reminding you that need to add the cost of the range, we're going to receive a five victory points which we're going to take immediately over here we're going to advance our uh, the uh, the meeple over here and we get to draft another citizen what does it mean to draft another citizen basically i look at the cards on the display and i'm taking a card to come to my active uh, to my active area so potentially if i explored in the first uh, in the first action that i have in my turn in the second one, which is playing a card, I can already use this card since this is in my active area. Okay, so 
I've discovered the tile, uh, I explored it, it means that I paid the price, na na na, took the bonuses, everything, now I'm flipping it. Now, after I flipped it, I can uh, decide how to orient this tile. It can be either like this or on the other side. How to do it and why, just in a few more minutes when we're going to talk about uh, the building. Now, first of all, as a concept, buildings can be built only on the desert uh, hexes. There are two kinds of buildings. The small one that is cost uh, three gears and the big building which cost uh, five gears. Now, Asaf, why the fluff would we like to build a building? So let me tell you. When we build a building, we uh, get to have the bonuses of the tiles around it. So in order to build a building right over here, I need to pay three gears and actually zero extra food because the range between this uh, chasm and this hex are actually zero. If I would have wanted to build a building here, I would have paid three gears because this is the cost of a small building and one food since this is the range between the chasm and this hex. But I would not like to build it over here. I want to build it right over here. The moment I build a building uh, in a hex, I get to have the bonuses around it. In this case, is to advance the markers, okay? This uh, uh, advance, uh, advancing uh, markers, uh, progress, or whatever they want to call them, one step uh, forward for each tile in that color. In this case, it means that I get to move all the trackers one step forward. Just like that. And because I uh, advanced one step forward, I'm actually able to discover all of this. So let's say over here in this case that we advanced our yellow progress marker one step forward. Then we can see that this circle over here is attached uh, only by one line. Okay, you see here it's only with the, the color of yellow uh, to this marker. So it means that when we uh, advance this uh, progress marker, we can take this token over here and put it at the uh, lowest uh, free space that we have on our tableau. Oh, I looked for the word. Now, after we have revealed this special power, this becomes uh, a power that we can uh, uh, use, or a technology, or whatever you want to call it. For me, it's a special power. In any case, to use this thing, we need to take this energy token and just put it on it. This is one of the free things that we can do on our turn, and we will talk about the other free things that we can do in uh, two more minutes. So we're going to put this token over here, and then uh, we will uh, resolve the ability or the power that we have in it. In this case, for example, we will get to increase our range by one. One more thing that I would like to add about our uh, personal machine or tableau is that we have uh, two kind of levels, let's say it like that. So the first level is um, with already a power or an ability that is printed on the board, but the other level has like a question mark on it. When we reveal uh, this uh, sort of thing, we actually, if you look over here at the display, we can uh, choose which power goes there. So in this case, I will choose, for example, this token, this uh, special machine, I will put it there. And whenever I want to activate it, I just need to put um, the energy token on it. It's important to say that each ability I can activate only one time. It means that if I already have an energy token on it, I cannot add another energy token on it and use this ability again. When we hibernate, which we'll talk about it just in one more second, we actually take all the energy tokens that we have on our uh, machine and put it back um, in our supply over here at the center of our uh, machine or tableau. Now I want to draw your attention uh, over here, but it can be any other location with two colors that are meeting it. In this case, we will need to meet the requirements of these two colors, which means that I need to reach or pass the uh, yellow progress marker uh, of three or more. And in the case of the green color, I will need to reach or pass a uh, number seven. 
So if, for example, the yellow progress tracker uh, reached over to the number three, but the green one is still on number two, I am uh, not able to reveal uh, which ability I have, I have over here and put uh, this token over here. When the green one will reach number seven or even pass it, then the conditions are met and I will be able to reveal this special ability and put this token over here on the uh, tracker. Now, we talked about small buildings, so let's talk about build buildings, which are basically the same. They're a bit more expensive because they cost five gears, but when you put a, build, a building over the a tile, you get to have not only one time this bonus, you get to have it two times. So if you can see over here, really next to the symbol of a uh, five gears, you get to see that this bonus, you will receive it two times. Let's talk about um, another thing, which is the lakes. When I'm having a building next to a lake, I get to have the bonus one time, okay? In this case, it will be a module. So if I have another building over here, I will not get the bonus from this lake again. Uh, on the contrary, if we have a building over here, so I received all of these bonuses. If I decide, sorry for the small earthquake over here, if I'm going to uh, have another building over here, I will get this bonus one more time, even though I received it with the last building that I've built. And the same that it is uh, for these tiles over here, it goes for the crystals at the edges of the map. Now, just in case it was not uh, clear or I didn't speak about it, the moment that we have either a building or a population meeple on the board, we're going to stop counting the range uh, from the chasm. The moment that we have a figure on the board, the chasm is not relevant for us in, uh, in terms of range at all. The last action that we have a possibility to do on our turn is to populate. Now, just like buildings can be put only on these desert hexes, population can be uh, put only on these ruined cities kind of hexes. Now, we saw that for exploring, we need to pay food, for buildings, we need to pay gears, and for a populating a population, we'll need to pay books. Why? I have no idea, I'm guessing that this is whatever they could have thought about, but all right. So if you can see over here, uh, there is like kind of, uh, I don't know how to call it, but you need to start when you're populating from the bottom part, and then you work your way up. So after we've populated with the first meeple, uh, we can choose either this population, this one, and this one. Let's say that we continued with this meeple over here, we will not be able to choose this meeple or this one to populate the next time since it is not open to us. We will only be able to populate with this one or one of these two. So again, we decided to populate with this meeple and uh, this is the first thing that we're going to put on the board. So I want to populate the city over here. The range is one Two, so I need to pay two food in order to populate here. On top of that, I will pay the two books that is the price that is written over here. And then I can put my population on this uh, ruined city. Each time that we're populating the board, we actually have another bonus that we can use uh, throughout the game. In this case, and uh, in different uh, tribes, you have different uh, uh, abilities that are being discovered uh, besides a few of them. But in any case, in this uh, tribe, you will have the possibility to trade two resources of any kind to one crystal. Another thing that I want to show you over here, and this is similar to all the boards, is that when we're populating with this one over here, if you can see this sign, it actually reveals for us it actually gives us the opportunity to use this slot uh, uh, for citizens right over there. The last thing that I would like to say about the population is these four tiles at the uh, corners of the board, which gives us actually uh, special bonuses if we have their population. So 
I'm not going to go too much into the iconography, even though I'm, I'm pretty sure that you already got it to understand it. And after uh, 30, 40 minutes into the game, you, you will know it by heart. But let's just take, for example, uh, this style over here. So basically, at the, uh, he's standing on his head. It's okay. Uh, but basically, at the end of the game, for every meepo, uh, for every population meepo, of course, that we have on this style, we will receive two victory points. So as a reminder, we can do two major actions on our turn, but there are three free actions that we can do at any given uh, time on our turn. The first one, as you already saw, is to use our energy token to activate one of the abilities in our machine. The second one is called trading, and this means that at any point of our turn, we can use one of the crystals in order to increase a, by one, of course, one of the other resources. The last free action that I can do on my turn is to open a crate. So let's say that I acquired, I don't know, with a few turns, I required uh, three or four crates. And for some goddamn reason, I didn't open them with curiosity and just left them next to me. At some point of my turn, maybe before I'm deciding which major action I want to take, I can open one or all of them, and uh, which means basically to flip them over and to see which bonuses there are uh, on the other side and take them in my possession. And of course, let's talk about hibernating, which means that if I don't do uh, at least one major action on my turn or I cannot, then in this case, I have to hibernate. What does it mean? Basically, it's just a, a reaction of uh, a few things that we need to do on our turn. Let's start with the first thing, which is um, to take all the cards from our resting area and putting them in our active space, okay? Right over here in our active area. The second thing that we want to do is to uh, lift the switch up uh, over here to the red light, which means that in the next turn we can use it again. The third thing is to take all the cards that we have on our slots, okay, in these positions, put them face down, and they're going right over there to our resting area. After that, we will want to take all the energy tokens from our machine, if we used them uh, in previous turns, and put them back at the center, so we know that they are available again. The last thing that we want to do is to advance on our hibernation uh, tracking, which is right over there. After we did that, we take the bonus that is next to it, or any bonus that is lower than that. So, at the first time, of course, you can only take a, a module, but let's say that we hibernated again, and we're right over there. We can either take one victory point and one crystal, or we can choose the benefit below it, which is one module. I just want to draw your attention for one moment into the fourth position, which is right over here. In this case, we do two things. The first, of all, uh, the first one, sorry, is taking the benefit next to it on the right side or below it. And the other thing is that every time a player reaches this fourth position, he needs to take one of the major artifacts here from the display on the board and remove it from the game. If one of the players uh, reached this place and removed the last artifact, the last major artifact from the board, it actually triggered the end of the game. At some point, there will be a player that will take the last major artifact from the board and that will trigger the end of the game. That player that triggers the end of the game will take this token, okay, which is called uh, in a very surprising uh, uh, name, uh, end of game tile, which has the number four on it. And then we're going to uh, actually count all the points. So obviously the blue victory points, we don't need to count because it's over here right on the uh, victory point tracker. So we're only left to count the purple uh, victory points. So first of all, we will look at the lowest visible points on our progress track. So it's right over here. In this case, it will be zero, but obviously if I have here, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, then the lowest visible one will be 
uh, five victory points over here. The second thing that we will count that we will count is points on the unlocked technologies, which is right over here, which technologies we have uh, discovered, okay, on the tribe board. Then we will look over at the big locations over here at the corners of the map to see how many victory points we got from that. Then we will look on our personal tableau on the machine if we have revealed something uh, like this, okay? This is, uh, for example, the end game card bonus. So we can check how many cards we have and multiply it by, uh, in this case, for example, two victory points. In each one, there is a different condition. So I don't want to take too much of your time. I will let it discover on your own, but just know that it exists over here also. Then we will check uh, to see if we have uh, the end uh, the end game tile over here, which is worth uh, four points. If someone received a minor artifact, he can takes it, he, he takes it uh, from here, and which is worth two points. We will receive a uh, one point for each five remaining uh, resources. So if we have left with many resources on our uh, tableau, we can uh, convert it to one point for each five uh, resources. And then of course we will check the condition on the artifact card. Okay, so for example, uh, for every, each one of them will be triggered, okay? And then for each, uh, let's say for example, this is a good time to talk about it. In any case, I will receive one victory point for each of them, okay? But let's say that I have another one, another big major artifact in the uh, purple color, then this will activate again. So this means that for every energy token that I have, I will receive another victory point. If I have, um, I don't know, three energy tokens, for example, I will receive three victory points, but then I have a major artifact, so that will mean another three victory points. If I have two, it's another one, and you understood the rest of it. And so on for the other conditions on our artifact card.